Unlimited Lights Heat 1A is presented for Seafair by Baker Equipment. Quality, new and used aerial construction equipment. They're quick, they run bunched up, and here they are for the first heat of the day, 1A in the Unlimited Lights, Graham Trucking, Millennium Digital Media, the Miss America Classic Homes, Miss Graham Trucking, IRS Enviro, the Power Punch Oil Supplements, and Microsoft Office Project, and some veterans and young people driving these boats. Mike and Chip, take it away. Got quite a mix of boats, too. Some of them have carburetors. Some of them are using superchargers. This one, the Graham Trucking GT, is a supercharged boat. It'll have to make an outside stop, start, rather, and Greg Hopp will drive it very well. Ryan Malau, he was a rookie last year, but the first time he was allowed to this race. In the American Classic Homes, we have Bob Smets at the wheel. No wins on this course. Mark Eccles, he's out at Duval. He's a second-year racer, but winless so far. Another of our senior drivers is Rob Bork. He drives the Benz IRS Electric. Will Muncy, the name says it all. The son of the greatest racer ever, but winless in the UL Series. And they call this fellow the X-Man. Vince Zadaro driving the Microsoft Office Project, the Black Boat. Zadaro, the leading driver in the standings. There you see Chopper 7 pictures as the boats are scoring up. And, Mike, it's a little different how they start here in the unlimited light circuit. About a half a minute ago, the boats scored up here on the front straightaway. They must maintain their lanes for a full lap around and then make a flying start. I like this starting sequence. I do, too, Mike. What it means is that in the unlimited, you've seen boats come up to their line way too early and very slow. This type of starting sequence, we seem to have boats with more boat speed at the line, which makes for better racing, I think. Greg Hopp with horsepower to burn in that yellow boat is uh, getting a little pinched in there as he comes down to the straight, uh, front straightaway here as we make our start. Vince Sodaro on the inside. And the X-Man has a, a good start. It looks like we're legal across the line. And with a whole lot of power, a couple of yellow boats with blowers from the outside are going to try to close the door going down into this first corner. But Sodaro, that black boat right in the center of your screen, he's not going to like him to do that. Look at this boat out here on the outside. He's got a long way to go. Look at the distance he's got to go, but he's going to come out of the corner right with him. That boat is going really fast. And that is Greg Hopp. And he has that GT boat really screaming down this back chute now. He's got a lot of power. But look at Vince Sodaro, a carburetor boat that black hole is staying right with them and there's the 19 boat coming up uh, also the Millennium Digital Media with Ryan Mallow I tell you Ryan Mallow is really showing me a lot of boat speed right now in this series where you've got the blown boats the supercharged boats you talked about on the outside racing against the normally aspirated boats on the inside looks to me like it's pretty good racing and if they're going to be able to close the door they must gain not just side by side but a whole rooster tails distance and that's difficult to do especially if on your hip on the inside is that black boat, Vince Adaro. Look at him carry some air underneath there. He's got a lot of horsepower as he goes down to that corner. Now we got a little traffic in the turn, too, which may cause a problem. I tell you, the boat on the inside, Vince Adaro, and that's the little boat that could. The boat's on the outside of him. They've got about 300 horsepower more than he does. But look at the shorter distance, what that does for him. A shorter way around the course and a whole lot of experience for the X-Man makes a big difference, obviously, as Sodaro is simply not going to use the victory to anybody, least of all the Millennium Digital Media. You know, there's nobody more aggressive than Sodaro. And if he were out there in a rubber raft with oars, he'd still take it to him. Coming around now the upper corner. Second time around this uh, turn now. And uh, Vince Sodaro has decided to tighten up his corner. But from the outside now, we've got a burst of speed. Oh. And coming across the line, it is Greg Hopp in the GT. Graham trucking. I think Vince Sodaro missed a buoy and is having to go back to pick it up. For some reason, he's gone back to the back stretch. But look at the lead. Now. He is doing that, and that pretty much gives it up for him. We have a slow boat in the lower corner down there as the other guys are getting around it. But all of a sudden, the race is yielded to the Graham Trucking GT. And Greg Hopp, who was actually running third and was making his move at the same time that Vince Sodaro apparently lost a buoy there on the upper corner and had to make it up. That made all the difference in the world. And Greg is running away with it now. You know, that's the thing about being aggressive. Being aggressive like Vince Sodaro is certainly can pay dividends. But it also means you're more vulnerable to make mistakes. And, you know, Vince uh, was running a really Really tight line as you pointed out but you, when you run a tight line like that it's very easy to take a bad hop and hit a buoy checkered flag is out for greg hop the veteran unlimited lights driver driving the national champion defending champion graham trucking gt across the line with a checker second across the line it's the millennium digital media with ryan mallow and coming back in the third position now it's the benz irs electric with rod bork 
Well, I think when we enter the questionnaire, which is better, more horsepower or shorter distance? And it looked to me like more horsepower was worth more than shorter but distance. But if this fellow had not missed the buoy, we'd still be asking the question, Chip. You know, I, I think they, they were going to have him anyway. It was going to be a good race, but I think the horsepower was going to win out on that time. I know Vince is going to be horribly disappointed because he really drove a great race. Vince Adaro finally gets scored as well with the checkered flag. You see the, the distance, see how the cockpit is closer to this side of the boat than it is to this side of the boat? That's called the offset. They, they put the engine to the, the left and the driver to the left to put more weight on the inside of the boat there. That was a good, good shot of that. There's Will Muncy. Unfortunately, not a good run for him. The power punch has no power, but looks like it's been punched. So there's Heat 1A. Let's go down to Bill Rocky in the pits. Thanks, Steve. Ryan Mallow, the first winner of the lights, heats. And what was it like out there for you? Uh, it was pretty rough. There's a lot of boats out there, uh, a lot of fast boats out there, and some good competition. You're back here in the Northwest. It's great to race here, isn't it? Yeah, the Seafair is, you know, one of the biggest events for us, with, you know, being one of the hometown boats and everything like that. So this is a pretty neat, neat event. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, Bill, thanks very much. Now, there's an infraction in this race. We talked about Greg Hopps so much, but it's Ryan Mallow with the win. And, Chip, explain to us what happened. This was in the scoring up process before the race. Here's Greg Hopp, and he's starting to infringe on these other boats here. He's supposed to be running parallel to the course. He's not. And he didn't actually interfere with this boat, but he didn't run parallel to the course. You can see this boat still has a lane in there, but he didn't run parallel to the course. Greg Hopp here, so he was disqualified. All right, and that led to these results on Limited Light Heat 1A with Millennium Digital and Ryan Mallow in the controls. They win, and IRS Enviro, followed by the U929 boat, the Graham Trucking GT, Miss America Classics, Miss Graham Trucking, and the Power Punch Oil Supplements. And we head down to John Lynch now at the presentation stage. Thank you, Steve. And our winner of Heat 1A, driving the Tropical Tans, presents Millennium Digital Media, Ryan Mallow. With the presentation for the Heat 1A, Victor, here is Kathleen Baker. Hi, I'd like to uh, present Ryan uh, Mallow, the Heat UL 1A winner from Baker Equipment, used sales for aerial and um, forklift equipment. Congratulations, Ryan, for a great race. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much. I want to uh, thank Baker Equipment, Millennium Cable, and Tropical Tan for all their good involvement in the sport. And uh, Seafair, great event. Glad to be here. And that's Heat 1A of the Graham Trucking Cup for Unlimited Lights at Seafair. Back to you, Steve. Unlimited Lights Heat 1B is presented for Seafair by Graham Trucking. CDL Class A drivers wanted at GrahamTrucking.com. And the breeze is starting to pick up here for Heat 1B of the lights. Mako Bremerton, BoatTrader.com. CompuWare's Critical Logic, Venture Bank Shucks, Kings and Bunny Supply and Appliance, Miss Boat Electric, and Atomic Screen Printing. And we've got a couple of interesting drivers in this one, Mike and Chip. Take it away. We do indeed. Let's start with uh, Mako Bremerton, Al Carstensen. This is a. Uh, a veteran driver. He knows what he's doing, but uh, he has uh, not had a win out here on Lake Washington. Love to get one now. Michael Flaherty, that's your champion from last year. This is his fourth year racing, and he would love to repeat. Paul Becker bought the oldest boat in the uh, pits a few years ago, and he has moved up with that critical logic. This is a new, a new and fast boat. Dustin Eccles, he's famous for blowing a boat over after a race last year in Tri-Cities, but he's a, the inboard champion that could win this. Cal Phipps is driving for the Thunder Valley boys, and this is an interesting group of people and a good racing team. Kaylee Perkins, she's smart, she's young, she's athletic. This could be the new face of racing right here. And rounding out the atomic screen printing, this is another Zadaro, Charlie Zadaro aboard this boat. And here they come down the back straight, scoring up just inside of 30 seconds. We're just about ready to go racing, Mike. And remember, they have scored up and have chosen their lanes on the front straight away. They are now coming around the arc of the north turn for the last time. The blown boats, supercharged boats on the outside, the carburetor boats on the inside, and the carburetor boats, if they're going to be overtaken, have to be overtaken after one lap and by a full rooster tail. So we've got lots of traffic as we come down to start this race. And in the number two lane, it's the young lady, Kaylee Perkins, in that bright red boat, coming across the line with a great start. And she's going to get into that corner very well, Chip. 
Kaylee Perkins hit the start perfectly. She's got a boat on the inside of her with a lot of boat speed. This is going to be a real test for her. Kaylee Perkins in the boat electric. That's the red boat in the uh, second lane. Running through the corner, however, and tightening up right now. Coming around, uh, that's the Becker boat. That's the critical logic. And uh, down the back chute, here we come with uh, Kaylee Perkins giving chase. I tell you, watch this Kaylee because she's got it all. I think she's got a lot of experience. They haven't given her all the horsepower that that boat can give her. But look at her. She's hanging right in there, even though they have dialed that motor back a little bit. Through the corner, we've got tough competition there, both for first and second and for uh, third and fourth as well. Lots of traffic through there. And it looks like Paul, uh, Paul Becker is going to get out of that corner and start to put the uh, hammer down as he comes down to take the green flag in the end of lap number one. But Kaylee Perkins is keeping the pressure on him as she comes down in second place. Paul Becker gets more out of a boat than anybody I've ever seen. He used to come here with the, the oldest boat in the fleet, and he would give everybody fits. This guy's a really good driver. Cal Phipps in the Thunder Valley is in third place right now as they around the lower corner one more time up the back chute. In his mirrors, Paul Becker is driving that uh, critical logic and looking back, seeing all kinds of red as here on the outside comes a young Kaylee Perkins. Capitol Hill girl works in the family bakery. She's pulled even with him. She I tell is. you, she's going to give him a run. From the outside, for her to get even with him, this is going to be really good because she was back four or five bow lengths. Now to get up there next to him, that's quite a race. Lots of speed, both of those boats. Kaylee gets an excellent turn, but she got a little bit of water coming through that corner, and uh, that caused her a, a bit of a delay, but now the horsepower is back up again, and uh, Kaylee Perkins giving chase into lap number two. That yellow and blue boat is Paul Becker in the critical logic. He's got a lead, but it's a precarious lead because he's got Kaylee Perkins on the outside of the boat electric trying to run him down. You know, Kaylee Perkins, as I said earlier, there's more power in that boat. So as the weekend progresses and they see her get more and more experience, they may feel like they can give her more horsepower. And if I were Paul Becker, I wouldn't want that girl behind me with more horsepower. I wouldn't either, but it looks like now she's willing to settle for second place here because she's allowing Paul Becker to uh, kind of run away on her right now. There you see what they're seeing uh, in that cockpit. There's a view that Kaylee Perkins has got, and you can see that she's a rooster tail and a half behind Paul Becker at this time in the critical logic as they go through the north turn one more time and you can also see how rough that water is up there every time they go through these corners they roughen it up so everything you know i think kaylee's going to get some pressure from the outside too from behind her so she's going to have to get her uh, get her boat across that finish line checkered flag quick. is out though and paul becker is going to take the critical logic across the line in first place and uh, kaylee perkins nice ride for her second place in that boat electric and third over the line, the Miss Graham Trucking comes across the line now. Cal Phipps, and oh, here we've got a battle going for uh, for fourth and fifth. And Look at this wing have right a, here. a wing that's bent up. That's the Kanamako. That's the wing that they use for the, as the boat starts to get air under it, the driver uses his left foot to push that wing down to get the bow of the boat down. But as you can see, this wing right there, is supposed to be right there. Yeah, El Carcasson is wanting to look at that kind of a view because when he gets back to the pits, he knows the crew's got some work to do. You know, I talked to Kaylee Perkins' team uh, earlier in the week, and they said all they want her to do is get laps under her belt. She's under no pressure to win, and I think that team's going to be really happy with that second-place finish. CompuWare presents Critical Logic. Paul Becker, your winner of Heat 1B. So lots of good racing action there in Heat 1B. We'll get you the unofficial results. Let's take it down to the pits and see what the winner has to say. Thanks, Steve. Paul Becker wins Heat 1B. And Paul, great race. Kaylee Perkins gave you all you could handle. Well, she did. She's a great competitor and is a lot of fun out there. What's Seattle like for you? What's it mean to race here? Well, I was standing right over there in the Mount Baker pits when Lou Fagel flipped the slow-mo five back in, I think it was 1953, and I remember the big yellow boat going over. I've loved hydroplanes all my life. Uh, I'm fortunate to be blessed to have the opportunity to be back here, a race with my son and his friends, and uh, my brother's one of the sponsors. Gosh, what a dream come true. It's wonderful. Good luck the rest of the way, Paul. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, Bill, thanks very much. Here are the official results now of Heat 1B, and Paul Becker takes the win in critical line. There's the Miss Boat Electric with Kaylee Perkins at the controls in the second position. Baker Equipment in third. Mako of Bremerton fourth. Venture Bank of Sh and Chucks along with Atomic Screen Printing and King and Bunnies round out the field for Heat 1B. Here again is John Lynch at the presentation stage. Thank you, Steve.
Power Boats Northwest Unlimited Light Hydroplane Racing Series here at the Graham Trucking Cup for Unlimited Lights at Seafair. Heat 1B, the winner, Paul Becker in CompuWare's Miss Critical Logic. To make the presentation, here is Rob Graham. Thanks, John. Great to be here. First time out. And uh, Paul Becker, congratulations. Paul Becker with the UL14 and Critical Logic CompuWare. Just wanted to prove I could do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be here. I want to thank CompuWare and Critical Logic, our sponsors. Most of all, I want to thank our crew of fine young men who have worked literally day and night to get this boat ready. This is the first weekend it's run, and boy, is it running. So thank you very much, Seattle. Congratulations, Paul. We'll send it back upstairs. Unlimited Lights Heat 2A is presented for Seafair by Sickle Steel Crane, quality lifting service since 1937. And let's take a look at the boats and the draw here in Heat 2A for the Unlimited Lights. There's supposed to be seven boats on the course. We'll see, though. BoatTrader.com, Venture Bank, Miss America Classic Homes, Graham Trucking, King and Bunnies, Power Punch, and Microsoft Office Project. But I don't think we've got seven boats out there. Let's check on the drivers, however, with Mike and Chip. Let's start out first with the UL8 boat. That's Mike Flaherty of the Baker Equipment Boat. Mike is a seasoned pilot on these race boats, and he would like to perform better than he did first time out. Venture Bank with Dustin Eccles. He's uh, the, the son of Mark Eccles. He had a pretty good heat the first heat, but he's got to do better here to make the finals. That's pretty much the same thing for Bob Smith, who had a decent uh, first heat, but he finished farther back in that American Classic Holmes boat. Mark Eccles, Dustin's father, had a decent, but again, he's going to have to race his son hard to get in the final. Cal Phipps, the Thunder Valley guys, kings and bunnies in the UL40. Cal's a seasoned driver as well. Did not get a good start last time. Will Muncy finished only eighth in his first heat. He's got to do much, much better to make the final. And Vince sidaro has got to make sure he goes around all the buoys this time because that cost him a victory last time out. So it doesn't look like the Graham Trucking is going to be out there for the run. The course is a bit choppy. The boats are 20 seconds away from scoring up. And again, the different scoring system in the Unlimited Lights, Michael. Actually, uh, that boat is Bob Smith's and the uh, American Classic that isn't going to make it. The Graham Trucking is out there. Don't want to make those fans nervous. Yes, they are scored up already on the front straightaway, of course. And then they come down all the way around the race course to make their start. And here they come. And across the line, maybe a little bit early. It appears that it might have been the Venture uh, bank boat to the big white boat, brand new. Uh, from uh, the Seattle area here, but uh, in any event, he streaks out in front. This is a good example of getting a good start. Even on the outside, is worth a lot. He's got a lot of distance to go, but that breaking that start line first makes a huge help. And he started outside, of course, because this is a supercharged boat, the black boat that's showing the lead there on the right-hand side of your screen with the white one coming up. That is Vince Sidaro, the X-Man, but look at the power that that blower engine provides as the uh, the, the uh, 17 boat comes crushing through with uh, Dustin Eccles at the controls. This is the same situation we saw before we see the, un the normally aspirated boat on the inside the smaller engine so to speak and the big blowing boat over here with the supercharger coming on the outside and as you can see they have about the same speed around the race course they do and zadaro has been here before on the inside with one of those powerful blower boats outside and he leads across the line at the end of lap number one Vince Sadaro, the x-man does and uh, down into the lower corner again and uh, the chase is on as the uh, venture bank boat with dustin eccles catches up that boat in third got squeezed really bad. It was legal, I think. There was plenty of room, but he ate a lot of water from those front leading boats. Zadaro this time got off the turn first, but uh, this time the uh, venture boat is right next to him. And, and this will make the difference now as far as power is concerned. Watch this. As the uh, white boat comes whipping on by with that extra horsepower. Now, Zadaro is trailing into the turn now by about a half a rooster tail, and it's just that quick that the difference is made. Zadaro's going to get a good tight along the buoy corner, but it isn't going to make much difference because right now Dustin Eccles has got control of this one. You know, Zadaro did the same thing in the first heat, but he hit a buoy. It's always very dangerous trying to touch those buoys or just get around the outside because one little slip, the boat takes a surprising hop, and you've hit the buoy and you're disqualified. Of course, we have the question about whether or not uh, the Venture Bank boat was too soon to the line. If he wasn't, it was a picture-perfect start. Maybe Zadaro knows something we don't know in terms of backing off now at this point. Now, around the corner.
corner on the lower side. It's uh, going to be an overtake. Will Muncie is going to uh, uh, find that uh, he has been lapped now in the power punch boat as the uh, Venture Bank goes by with Dustin Eccles at 17 boat brand new. That's the Rick Bridgman racing team here in uh, the Seattle area. And this is a brand new beautiful Ron Jones boat. Now, how are we going to know if he jumps the gun or not? Because we're not getting word from the officials if he has to do an extra lap. If he does not see the checkered flag, but rather the white flag. That's how we'll know. And the white is that now the checker comes up. The checker has come up. So I guess that was a picture-perfect start because he is seeing the black and white flag right now. The checkered flag across the line goes Dustin Eccles in the Venture Bank first uh, in this Heat 2A. Coming down the line now. We have uh, Vince Sidaro. He will take the checkered flag for a second place. And right behind him, it'll be the Miss Graham trucking. That's Mark Eccles in the 33 boat as he comes zipping across the line. The fourth across the line is actually a lap back, and that would be the power punch. That would be Will Muncy. You know, we talk about superchargers and non-supercharged engines. The difference is a non-supercharged engine basically just pulls in atmospheric air. A supercharged engine takes the air and rams it into the engine, which makes a lot more horsepower. Score a fourth place finish for this boat. The Baker Equipment boat having come across the line still ahead of uh, Will Muncy's boat. Cal Phipps is also uh, one who uh, unfortunately uh, didn't manage to uh, get scored here. And so uh, he's out of it. No points for him a second time out. And that's a problem, of course. The American Classics boat did not get a chance to make a start. But Mike Flaherty gets scored. Ben Sodaro found out halfway through that race that, that he was probably going to win because Dustin jumped the gun. Yeah, he. Uh, I saw him go across the line. I, I thought he jumped. I, I was pretty sure he was over. Um, but I want to stay with him just in case. I stayed with him. As soon as I found out, I backed off a little bit to save the equipment for the final tomorrow. This uh, helped the cause because uh, what happened in your first heat? The first heat, we missed a buoy. Um, the boat hopped up on me uh, going through the corner, and then it came down. It was going in the wrong direction. You can't correct it fast enough to take care of it. Um, so we just brought the first tech Microsoft project boat out this time, got the win, and hopefully that gets us in the final. Thanks, thanks a lot. Steve, back to you. So here's the reason we were talking to the X-Man, Vince Sidaro, because Dustin Eccles jumped the gun. With one second to go, he crossed the start-finish line. That is a one-minute penalty. So that penalty means 929. The Microsoft Office Project is the winner with the X-Man, Vince Sidaro at the controls, Miss Graham Trucking, Boat Trader, Venture Banks, Power Punch Oil Supplements, and then the two did not start, the Miss American Classic Homes and King and Bunnies. Back to John Lynch at the presentation stand. Thanks, Steve. Heat 2A, the winner, Vince, the X-Man Sodaro, in the First Tech Credit Union presents Microsoft Office Project 2007. Here to make the presentation, Mr. Bill Parrott. Thank you. I am Bill Parrott with Sickle Steel Crane, and on behalf of Sickle Steel Crane and the Sickle Steel Crane kids, we'd like to present you with the award for winning Heat 2A. Congratulations, Vince. It's a great race. Can I say something? Thank you, Sickle Steel. Thanks to uh, First Tech Credit Union Microsoft Office Project 2007 for supporting us here at Seafair. <clears throat> Thanks to my engine builder, Performance Engine Development, that built me a great engine this year. We're really fast, and hopefully we can repeat this in the final tomorrow. Thank you. And Vince, the X-Man Zadaro, is in the final. Back to you, Steve. As a matter of fact, as uh, we now see these boats uh, here in the pits, what we want to do is talk about, as we're getting ready for the next heat, uh, what, what's going on down there right now, Chip? Well, with the guys that are, where things are going well, they're just kind of looking everything over, double-checking. The guys that are really struggling for points or that had mechanical problems, they could be taking gearboxes out, engines out, total rebuilds. And then if you've got a boat that doesn't handle, you've tried all week to make little changes. At this point, you don't make little changes. You just change everything and see if you can get this thing to work couple of the boats, including the uh, Tri-Arc Electric, remember, they just they completely went over. And uh, they have actually had teams come to them and say, what kind of parts do you need? And that that's something that is we see all the time in this sport, isn't it? Well, last night you pointed out you recognized Jim Lacero. Jim Lacero was one of the greatest crew chiefs of all time. He was my crew chief at the Atlas Van Lines. And all of a sudden, he appeared with a pickup truck took the engine, the wet engine, out of that boat, put it in his truck, took it to his shop, and ran it last night on what they call a dyno. And a dyno is a place where you can run an engine, and the engine thinks it's in the boat. It's under a load. So when something wrong goes, when something does go wrong, you really find out who your friends are. 
Well, and that boat and that crew, they've been working so hard. Rick Carella, the crew chief, uh, used to be with us here on this program, as a matter of fact. Uh, there is the uh, crew, and that's, I think, Mike Hansen and the crew members of the uh, Alberto team as they're getting ready too and they've got a terrific boat well set up for the course today. They do that's a brand new boat and I think the only thing they're lacking is maybe some propellers and gearboxes to run right there with uh, Bill Walk and the Elam. Well we've got more racing to talk about in fact uh, we've got live racing coming up a bit later unlimited heat 3A and 3B but up next the unlimited lights heat 2B much more as you can see on the screen fun at the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair. Live coverage of the Key Bank Air Show at Seafair is presented by Key Bank, proud sponsor of Seafair. Unlimited Lights Heat 2B is presented for Seafair by Graham Trucking. CDL Class A drivers wanted at GrahamTrucking.com. And Heat 2B has the fastest boats of the Unlimited Lights. Here you go. Graham Trucking GT, Mako of Bremerton, Computerware's Cri uh, Critical Logic, Millennium Digital Media, IRS Enviro, Miss Boat Electric, and the Atomic Screen Printing. And again, the first and second place boats in both the earlier heats are racing in this one. Mike and Chip, take it away on those drivers. And of course, we've got several of the blower boats in this one, including the Graham Trucking with Greg Hopp. Greg Robb himself of a victory last uh, heat by an infraction. Al Carstensen finished fourth in his first heat. He's got to finish fourth or better to stay alive for the final. Good race last time out by Paul Becker. He wants to repeat that again in the uh, Tom Fuerz presents the critical logic boat. Ryan Malau, he won his first heat. He can win it again. Rob Bork did not have a good uh, outing first time out uh, for the unlimited lights. He wants to make amends now in that 62 boat. Kaylee Perkins finished second in her first heat. She needs to keep just doing that, and she's going to find herself in the final. And the other Zadaro, Charles, didn't get a chance to race last time, couldn't make a start. He's going to make one this time. He's out there. Again, another heat with seven boats, 30 seconds. As they score up on the backstretch, and this looks pretty, all these boats coming down, Michael. And you can see that they're already positioned as far as lanes are concerned. That's been uh, about decided about 45 seconds ago as they come into the corner. The question is, who gets to the first turn first? You're looking at Greg Hopp as he comes around the corner in that Graham Trucking GT. He must start outside. He must stay outside for one lap, and he can close in only when he has a rooster tail lead if he can uh, manage the boat speed. But he does have the speed. And coming to the line, another perfect start, it looks like. We're going to see maybe, yeah, a perfect start. Kaylee for Perkins, the young lady. I believe. Kaylee Perkins with a perfect start in that bright red boat. The question is, does she have the uh, horsepower to hold everybody off going into the corner? Here we go into the turn, and there are a few ro rollers out there. Greg Hop on the outside has really got ahead of steam. Now, this is where Kaylee's got to learn that, you know, if she finishes second, third, or fourth, she's just fine. So I don't want her to risk everything in this heat, but it looks like she's got the boat speed to stay with these guys. The one who's leading is the Critical Logic right now, coming down the back chute. That's the Compuware Critical Logic. Paul Becker is leading. Kaylee is right inside there in that bright red boat, right on the outside of his rooster tail, trying to stay in there. Here she is. And she whips that boat into the north turn for the first time around three. So we got a lot of traffic into the corner, and she's got a boat inside of her that's going to cause her some problems as well. So off the turn with a whole lot of speed. The uh, GT boat, that's the Graham trucking boat with uh, Greg Hopp, has caught up to Kaylee, and he will lead her across the line in second place. And now he's making a bid uh, on Mr. Baker as well. That boat Paul Becker's driving is from Mexico. He left here, went to Mexico, and never got raced. He went to Mexico, brought it back. Looks like he made a good purchase. You're looking at what Kaylee sees outside her windscreen right now as she is that third boat inside there. She got a little loose. She got to the left and to the right a little bit, and she's having a little problem uh, holding lane at this point. Up the back shoot, however, we got a dandy boat race between two of the uh, supercharged boats. This one, and that's Paul Becker. Uh, he is driving a, a brand new boat, as Chip mentioned, and on the outside of him, that's the rooster tail you see almost in the center of your screen converging right now. That would be Greg Hopp. Okay, we're in the second uh, time around now in the north turn, and Hopp and Becker are nailed down now, deck on deck, as they come down to the start-finish line, and uh, Kaylee Perkins is trying to stay in this one as much as possible across the line. It is Greg Hopp on the outside. The leader, Paul Becker, on the inside is 
keeping the hammer down, but it looks like Brinkhoff has him handled going into this corner. When you can win when you're from behind and that far outside, that means you've got through to horsepower. That boat is running really, really well. But as they come out of the turn, Paul Becker makes another bid at it, knowing full well that uh, he might have a little turning uh, ability that the uh, the boat on the wider side does not have. It doesn't look like the horsepower is going to be enough to give Paul Becker the victory. And, in, and at this point now, you see we have almost a, a rooster tail a lead now for Mr. Hop as he goes into the corner for the last time up on the north end. And on this race course, it looks like he's going to dominate this heat. It's very frustrating when you can get a better start on a guy and he just drives around you on the outside. As a driver, you feel like you've done everything you can do. But Whoa. hey, there's nothing. Look at Kaylee now. She comes around the corner, going to try to pick off Paul Becker at the line if she can. She had a Paul good turn with a lot of spe uh, speed and she was over to, able to overcome him because uh, something happened to Becker at the last moment there. And let's hope that it wasn't her water. You know, let's hope she gave him enough room. He's got some her. damage. He's got a canard that's sticking up up there. Well, that may possibly have been from uh, from her prop wash. We certainly didn't see it, but it looks suspect that she was in there on his outside and really tight that maybe she might have got him or Paul Becker could have slid out into his rooster tail. We just don't know at this point. She made one uh, one uh, move on him and uh, made an attempt to try to overcome. It had a lot, real a good momentum through that corner, but she uh, appears to be having uh, in this race just a few control problems. Chip, she was uh, uh, kind of inside outside a little bit for a bit there. I think Becker had already slowed down before she uh, before she was next to him. You know, I, I think this is a real good learning experience for her. Really, she, there was no need for her to be near anybody. I would hope her radio person would say, look, you've already got a second. Take this third or fourth and just don't get in trouble. Let's... From all appearances, it was just a matter of uh, Becker getting out of attitude and hooking. I don't see any uh, any prop wash. There it is right there. Look, you see, coming yes. a little bit to the right. Oops. Ooh, and he even whacks a buoy, and that's where the canard got broken. Wow. You don't see Paul Becker make that kind of a mistake very often. But remember what we talked about earlier. When you run real close to the buoys, you're, you're leaving yourself no room for air. If that boat takes a nasty hop, this is the result. Well, Greg Hopp had to go through a penalty the first time out. A little bit better result this time, Greg. Yeah, well, this time, both, both times, it was a, you know, first place physically on the race course. Last time was a driving infraction. And this time, fortunately, especially for Rob Graham, a Graham trucking, you know, he, he sponsors all these races, sponsors the stage, sponsors my boat, sponsors another boat. And uh, I just feel glad for Rob that we're able to get the win. And, and hopefully that gives us enough points to make the final lap and run that B main. All right, Greg, thanks a lot. All right, thanks. All right, here are your 2B official results now for the Unlimiteds. And you can see Graham Truck and Greg Hop is the winner. But there is Miss Boat Electric, and that's Kaylee Perkins. She finishes second. Mako of Bremerton, IRS Enviro, Atomic Screen Printing, CompuWare Critical, the UL-14 boat, hooked that buoy, and then did not finish as the Millennium Digital Media. Down again to the presentation stage, and here is John Lynch. Thanks, Steve. Heat to be the winner, Greg Hopp in a great drive in the Graham Trucking GT. Here to make the presentation, Rob Graham. Thanks, John. This is a lot of history here. This is uh, really exciting for me. It's uh, uh, clear back to the 80s. We've been with these guys a long time, and it's uh, actually uh, r really, I'm just super glad that you got this one, Greg. Congratulations. All right, thanks a lot, Rob. Yeah, back at Rob. Uh, Sponsored my, uh, <laughs> I brought him into the sport with my little two and a half liter years ago. So on and off, he's been sponsoring our boats. And uh, I can't thank Rob Graham enough for, and Graham Trucking Incorporated uh, for the sponsorship. And uh, glad to get the win. Like to thank our engine builder, Ed Treehe, who just happens to have had his appendix taken out two days ago. So hopefully he's doing all right. Uh, Scott Baker banged us out one heck of a propeller. We uh, broke it in the first heat. We ran all the way home with Marysville, welded it up, and brought it back, and that's what won this heat. So thanks to everyone. Woo! And next up for Greg Hopp, the final heat, and back upstairs. Unlimited Heat 3A coming your way, and here are the stories we're going to be looking for. Dr. Ken Muscatel has got a fast boat underneath him. How well is he going to do? How about Greg Hopp? He won the last heat, 2A. Let's see what he can do. There is Nate Brown's boat. It's in the water as well, and it is running well. That's all coming up in Heat 3A.
Heat 3A of the Chevy Cup at Seafair is brought to you by Novus, the windshield repair experts, and is presented for Seafair by W.J. Deutsch & Sons, proud importer of Yellowtail Wines. Tails, you win. Here's your lineup for 3A, the Red Dot, ProCraft Windows, the two Formula Boats, Miss Car Pros, and the MirageBoats.com. We come out to the course. The boats are already moving well around the course on this sunny day. The water's getting kicked up as well. Just about three minutes before we take off for Heat 3A. Let's run down these uh, pilots of these aircraft on the water. First off, the U-17, Nate Brown. He says this is his final race, Mike. Yeah, but he has gained confidence in this brand new boat of his, and I think that he's going to try for a win here. Chip Ken Muscatel spun out in 2A, but he's got some boat speed under him now. If he doesn't win, I think he's done. Bill Rocky's in the pits. Is Ken Muscatel ready for this one, Bill? Ken Muscatel is very disappointed. He had a second, and then he obviously didn't finish his last one. He's going to try to go out there and do something right now. He needs points. All right, the U5, Jeff Bryant in the FormulaBoats.com. Michael? Well, Jeff Bernard had a win, and then in his last heat, he had a very disappointing finish, and he's blaming J. Michael Kelly and the car pros for that. How about the U1? Jimmy uh, Shane needs a little more boat speed, I think, Chip. Yeah, I think he needs more time. Last week was his first race. He's here just to learn. The car pros boat with J. Michael Kelly. There he is. He's young, and uh, and he's getting great experience. And he's uh, got a little bit of heat under the collar right at the moment because he did not perform well, and he thinks somebody else did that to him. He's going to try to show somebody up this time. Here's a guy who did perform well. He won in Heat 2A at 137-plus miles an hour. He's my pick to win this heat again. And, Guard, how about that pit down there for the Mirage Boats Group? Well, they're excited. They said between heats, they took their front wing, they dropped it a little bit to keep the nose down because they're expecting rough weather. But, Steve, you said it's a little bit of luck to win these heats. It's about as quiet as far as wind is concerned going into this win right now. So we'll see if their adjustment is correct or not. We will indeed. And, Pat, we've got some fast boats on this course. Well, Jack in the Box congratulates Tacoma's, uh, the guy Tacoma's rooting for, Jeff Bernard. Fastest qualifier in the FormulaBoats.com in this heat, 152 miles an hour. And, of course, for the best in fast food anytime, stop at your nearest Jack in the Box. And the parade is bringing the boats down to the line, and I mean it is a parade, Mike. And there's little head games going on between Jeff Bernard in that red Formula Boats and the uh, yellow and green car pros with J. Michael Kelly. Formula Boats looks like they want the inside lane, but also further up ahead in the corner and hardly moving uh, is Greg Hopp in the Mirage Boats, and uh, he, too, wants that inside lane, So, and it looks as though he will occupy it. He crept up there all the way up the back stretch. Took him almost a minute to get up there. Now all the other boats are coming around, and it looks like it's going to be that boat right there, the Mirage Boats with Greg Hopp at the wheel. But he's going to have to uh, ratchet up his speed because we're really kind of early right at the moment. Some of the other guys coming out a little bit wider are starting to show a little bit of boat speed here. We have one of the Seafair Pirates on the barge with us here to wave the start-finish line flag here this That's time. That's Captain Kidd. And here they come to the line. It looks like with three seconds, they so were going to be on time. The clock zeroes out. Everybody crosses the line, and Formula Boats takes them across the line. To Jeff Bernard now on the outside in the four lane, coming on strong in the five lane, I should say. That's Nate Brown, but as they come through, it's going to be the Formula Boats on the in the middle, and on the outside of him is that yellow and red car pros, and that's Jay Michael, and in the inside, that is Greg Hopp. So we got a good one, two, three battle going up this back shoot on lap one. Jeff Bernard is getting good starts week in and week out. He did the same thing last week in the Tri-Cities. He's really showing me a lot. Jeff Bernard now into the corner now keeping the, the boat speed up however behind him are both Greg Hopp and J. Michael Kelly. Greg on the inside and Kelly on the outside as they come around the corner all three of them are going to exit the uh, the uh, turn for fairly close but still in control here. It is Jeff Bernard in the number five boat the formula boats .com, as he comes down to end lap number one up front second place. It's Greg Hopp in, in third place J. Michael Kelly in the car pros is pulling alongside now or trying to uh, 
catch up with Greg Hopp, but he's got a lot of water to make up. He does. Greg Hopp has really got to keep the pressure on because he does not have a lot of points to get into the finals. So he really needs to win or at least, at least hang on to the second place. And J. Michael Kelly's putting a lot of pressure on him on the outside. He is. He got a better turn than Greg Hopp did, and he seems to have some boat speed now coming down the uh, uh, back straightaway. However, he's pretty far out there in about five or six lanes driving a big race course right now. Your leader, that's the red boat, former Budweiser Hull. It's the U5 Formula Boats.com. Jeff Bernard, a fine new driver, a couple of years under his belt now, but start to show what he's made of, and he's going to be one of the greats, I think. Chip is absolutely right about this guy. Gone to the inside now is Greg Hopp. Greg Hopp has gone to the inside that and has tried uh, to try to make up some ground here. And that might be a mistake because now Greg Hopp is going to have to run in Jeff Bernard's rough water. J. Michael Kelly did this smart thing and stayed wide out here where the water is nice and clean, and I think it's going to pay off right it now. It has paid off indeed because now J. Michael Kelly has taken over second, and he's starting to put some distance between himself Hop's, and the Mirage boats. Hop's gone down in the south turn. Hop's is out of it. Uh, Greg Hop is out of it now. Unfortunately, something happened down there. We'll have to figure out what that was, it's Pat. Tacoma versus Puyallup. It's uh, Jeff Bernard and J. Michael Kelly, and here they come down to the floating bridge turn. And after the last heat, they had a little angry exchange. Don't know exactly what that was all about. Both of them blamed their poor finish in the last heat uh, on each other. So uh, they got a little bit of an axe to grind. The uh, checkered flag is coming out on the uh, tower here, or the white flag rather, out on the tower here as uh, across get, the white flag goes uh, the red dot. Now the uh, checkered flag comes up and Jeff Bernard's going to win it in the U5 Formula Boats. Had a, a game once again. Carpro's boats, J. Michael Kelly trying to catch him, but uh, ran out of time to get it done. That was a mighty close finish. Uh, J. Michael Kelly almost caught him. He was only behind him about four boat lengths at the close. He did indeed. I think J. Michael Kelly is going to be going with a strategy all weekend of staying kind of on the outside and looking for good water, and I think it paid off there. It's a case of building points to get into the final heat. And uh, that's what it's all about for uh, the Carpros guys. And Greg Hopp got running again, and here he comes down to uh, finish fourth. And I think what happened, remember we talked about Greg Hopp having to run in the rough water of the boat in front of him instead of moving out? I think he took a gulp of water, and I think that's what put the fire out. So hopefully Greg learned that when, you know, you're boxed in and there's rough water, you got to get out of there and find someplace good to run. So the victory goes to the red boat. FormulaBoats.com and uh, coming back to the pits now, Jeff Bernard. It's funny that these two had words because they, they really are great friends. But uh, you know, when you put the boats in the water, it's just another competitor. These are focused drivers, Chip. In many respects, uh, these two guys remind me of you. You were kind of the ice man. Nobody could talk to you uh, very much when you, when you were getting ready to race. Your head was in the in the game, and these fellows the same way. You know, it takes a lot of intensity to drive these boats, and unlike a football team that's on the sidelines that's protected from the fans, you know, people can get to you here. So, uh, yeah, I used to isolate myself in the truck and really try to keep my concentration. You know, as we're looking at this picture on the screen and we see the U5 coming in, it reminds me that that boat, when it was a Budweiser, came in after so many heat victories, and there's that hull coming back in, with having seen the checkered flag and having win Heat 3A. And a young and very, very promising driver aboard it, probably as good a guy as ever has been in a hull that once bore the A of the Eagle. And this guy's done a pretty good job since flipping in Evansville, by the way. And Chip, you've been there. We talked about Jeff Bertram yesterday. The kind of thing that you just have to put out of your mind. If you're going to keep going back to racing, you got to know that those things are going to happen once in a while. And that's youth. And I think that's what changed for me. After a while, you're done with that. But these young guys, they just immediately put it out of their mind. And all they want to do is get right back in the boat. Gutsy guys, Michael. They are indeed. And uh, that was a, a cerebral race. Run as fast as you have to go to win. Take advantage of the situation. Let the race come to you. And uh, that's a sign of a driver who's learning and, and honing his skills. You don't have to be a record setter and go screaming around the race course lap after lap in order to be a champion. Being a champion means knowing how fast you have to drive to win and not jeopardizing equipment to get there. He turned his first lap at 140 miles an hour, then was able to back off to about 136. And we've seen faster the... laps than that, Pat, in this meet so far. Uh, but that's, again, driving with your head. That's a good idea. 
There is the guy who was driving with his head. That's Jeff Bernard as he climbs off the uh, deck of his boat. Congratulated by his crew and he'll step up and we'll get a word with him in just a couple seconds as uh, he is the unofficial winner of unlimited heat 3A. Bill Rockies down in the pits. Bill. All right, let's come out here and get a hold of Jeff here. He's taking his helmet on all the off and all that good stuff. Jeff, uh, another great race for you, and you're hooked up again with your buddy Jay Michael. Yeah, it, uh, you know the first heat we got good start. Um, got behind Alberto, having a tough time getting over this rough stuff. It's really nice to be out front. Uh, one more heat to go. Hopefully we can give that orange boat and even the U10 and the U6. They're all running at 37. Hopefully, hopefully we got something for them. But man, I got to thank Ted Porter and Formula. Awesome weekend so far. We got two wins this weekend, two wins last weekend. We're changing our season around, going to San Diego. All right, Jeff, keep it going. Steve, let's go back up to you. All right, Bill. Guard Swanson is in the pits as well. Cairo 7 Sports Director. Guard, take it away. All right, Steve, we're here with Jay Michael Kelly. And Jay, I tell you what, if you're going to have to finish second sometime, you got to do it right now because you guys need points to get into the final. Exactly. Uh, points is what gets you in the final. Uh, last few uh, races, we've fell short and had come through the back door. Uh, I think uh, with that second place finish, it'll put us up in the front row to get the car pros boat back up uh, on that front row where it should be. So tell me a little bit about your strategy in that last heat. Um, basically stay clean. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get on the inside of some of the other boats because we can't troll like those guys. So uh, got up there as early as we could and uh, hit the start and basically uh, it was hold off those guys the rest of their way. and. Uh, I was pushing uh, Mr. Bernard there for a while and came close at the end, but uh, needed about another lap or so, and we may have got him. All right, have fun the rest of the afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Steve. Puyallup's own J. Michael Kelly. Here are your unofficial results now of Unlimited Heat 3A with FormulaBoats.com. The U5 boat winning, again, unofficial results, car pros, ProCraft Windows, and Dr. Ken, Mirage, Formula Boats, and the Miss Red Dot. Nate Brown out there with that brand new boat of his. That your unofficial results of Heat 3A. Heat 3A of the Chevy Cup at Seafair has been brought to you by Novus, the windshield repair experts. And congratulations to Jeff Bernard and the FormulaBoats.com, the number five boat, your Geico photo finish winner of Heat 3A. Your search for the best price on insurance is not finished until you call Geico. And Michael, 3B is coming up, and that's got the fast boats in it. How about that Elam and Beacon Plumbing? We'll find out. Their battle is next. Now, here's an awesome driver profile brought to you by Novus, the windshield repair experts. Now in his third year with Cooper Motorsports team, Jimmy King is looking to capture his first Chevrolet Cup. 1994 Unlimited Class Rookie of the Year, King has actually won the Automotive Gold Cup in Detroit, although it was in the Grand Prix class. With motivation fueled by three second place finishes in 2006, King and the piston-powered Cooper Motorsports team are sure to be top contenders for this year's title. So here are the stories we'll be looking for in Unlimited Hydro Heat 3B. John Theoret and the Beacon Plumbing captured the last race. What are they going to do this time? A rare loss for Dave Billwock and the Elam. Only two all season long. And Steve David. Oh boy, they're ready to race in Heat 3B. Heat 3B of the Chevy Cup at Seafair is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, the official airline of Seafair, with new nonstop service to Denver beginning November 4th, and is presented for Seafair by Chevrolet, an American revolution. Here's the lineup. Six boats scheduled to be on the water. Haas Mortgage Investors with the two boats, Elam Plus, Beacon Plumbing, the plumbing joint, and the uh, sausage boat, oh boy, Oberto. Again, six out on the course. The U-21, the plumbing jo joint boat, was late getting into the water, but I think they're all out there now. Count them up at three minutes and counting. And the crowd loving it all along the shores of Lake Washington. Let's check out the drivers. Jimmy King, that piston-powered Haas Mortgage 2 boat. Michael? Yeah, he came to the Northwest, and if he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all this year. And Jimmy King simply must win, and that is a tall order, or he doesn't make the final on the front row. 
The U-10 boat chip, David Bryant, is coming along and looking very well after his first place finish. Not just looking well, he won a come from behind Heath. It was so close, I don't remember another one in history. Dave Vilwak and Elam Plus, and I think what says it all, Michael, is that he had very little to say after that last race where he finished second. He realizes a vulnerability he didn't think he had, and there are three boats out there who are going to test that this heat. Bill, read between the lines on what's going on in the pits right now for the Elam team. Well, I think they're concerned but not worried, if that makes any sense. Dave didn't seem that worried about what happened, but he does know that Theoret beat him. I don't think they worry about anything, frankly. The uh, Miss Beacon Plumbing, John Theoret, have just done a terrific job getting this boat ready to run again, Mike. But, you know, John Theoret has got to win this heat again because, remember, he did not finish yesterday. He's got one heat win, but he needs to beat Billwalk to assure himself a place in the final. Deck-to-deck -deck racing in this one, guard? Oh, yeah. I, I just talked to all the crew members down here. They're really intense right now. They, they know they have to win to get into the final. They say, we're pulling out all the stops. We are ready to go. The U-21 boat, Brian Perkins in the uh, plumbing joint, literally just getting away from the dock, Michael. An opportunity to get some experience, that's all. In this particular heat with these hot dogs, this guy doesn't have a dog in this fight. <laughs> and the U-6 boat, Steve David, the quiet, unassuming professor, can jump up and bite somebody, Chip. Yeah, but this time he just needs to go for a boat ride. He's got plenty of points. They finish, they finish high, so he just needs to relax, finish the heat, and go find himself in the final. So they're all out on the course now inside of a minute, and Pat, you've got the fastest boats to talk about here. Well, Jack in the Box congratulates for this heat. Beacon Plumbing and John Theoret driving that checkerboard decked boat. They qualified at 153.16 miles an hour, but all of the boats in this heat are lightning fast, and for the best in fast food, anytime, stop by your nearest Jack in the Box. There is a move that uh, Dave Vilwak just avoided. He almost got boxed in between Theoret and Steve David. That's what they wanted to do, but it didn't happen. He moved to the outside, but he came off clean, almost came to a dead stop there at the three-quarter mark of the back shoot in the score up. He will be in the three lane now. Inside of him will be Steve David in the two lane, and on the inside totally is Jean Theoret, and on the outside is David Bryant. He has, Dave Vilwak does, a handful out there as they come to this start. And it's a legal start with Theoret on the inside coming across the line first and leading him into the turn. Stephen David is uh, pursuing and right in second place at the moment in that corner. It is Dave Vilwak in the Miss Elam. Theoret did what he needed to do. He needed the inside and he needed to be the first guy across the start line. He did all of that. Now let's see if he's got the boat to stay in front of Vilwak. Theoret is trying to pull away, but Vilwak's concern is with David Bryan on the outside. Does he have boat speed enough to catch up to him? He's given it a shot. As they come up into the upper corner right now, we've got four boats up there within a tick of each other. And Jean Theoret, the French-Canadian from Valleyfield, Quebec, is leading him through the corner. And uh, Vilwak just made a huge wide turn and may have given some advantage to Stephen David on the inside. You know, Stephen David, all he's got to do is take that third. So I think he may lay back, but uh, Bill Watt cannot let Theoret just drive away from him. But that's exactly what Theoret's doing right now. And it now. comes as no surprise, Chip, but in the Haas Mortgage Investments boat, David Bryant is coming on strong on the outside, and he has his sights on that orange boat. He's a come-from-behind kid. I tell you what, he's really good at going fast on the outside. Maybe that's a flat-bottom technique, but I tell you what, he's given this team the, the shot in the arm they really need. He just got a great corner paddle day, and as he comes up the back shoot in third place, he's going to try to run down Stephen David in the Overto. This is one of the finest heats we've ever seen at Seafair. Theoret's at the floating bridge turn. He's coming down to complete the second lap. He's got a big lead over Vilwalk, and Steve David's pulling him on the inside, and he may give Vilwalk a run for it. And the lap number two about to take place as Jean Theoret gets the white flag. One more to go. The water is getting rough. There's a lot of air under those boats. The Elam is flying high. So is Theoret's uh, beacon plumbing. And a wild ride down the front straightaway as they go into the last corner. And still David Bryant in that Haas mortgage is keeping the pressure on. Well, I tell you what, if Dave Billwalk was rattled after Theoret beat him the first time, just think how rattled he is right now. I don't think Dave's got the boat speed that he thought he had over the rest of these guys. John Theoret has only a half a lap to go, and he's going to pick up another 400 points and again defeat the Elam. Up the back shoot now. It is the 
Beacon Plumbing, which beat the Elam one time and is ready to whack him a second time today. The second time it's been done all season, I might add. And here comes Jean Theoret down. You see what he sees. Just a few thousand feet to the finish line, and he will have done it for a second time in a row. Jean Theoret, Billy Shoemaker's Beacon Plumbing gets the checker. I think what Dave has learned is that he's got to be on the inside. All year long, he could win from the outside, but no more. Number three is the Alberto, and number four is Haas Mortgage. A doggone good-looking heat all together out there, and as you can see, the complexion of this race, of this Chevrolet Cup at Seafair, from what we thought it was 24 hours ago, is beginning to take on a whole new look. We thought it was just an Elam slam dunk, and it's turning out to be anything but that. But, you know, Dave Nowak is no dummy. He's been here a lot. Could he be laying back, Mike? Do you think he's playing possum? I've seen him do it before. He has done it before, but I got to tell you, there are three boats, and he contended with all three of them, and one of them beat him, and one of them nearly beat him, and a fourth boat that is a wild card out here, and you know what? I, I agree with you, Chip. He needs to go to the inside, but I don't think he wants to do that, and I think these other guys would love it if he did. Okay. Hey, if you ever wanted to see a perfect start, take a look at this. Yeah, this is gorgeous. This is John Theoret, and this is what made John Theoret the Chevrolet Cup champion the last two years. He gets great starts. Two, one, go. That, that's how it's done, folks. Absolutely. And John Theorat has just been very good at this when he needs to do it. He's funny. He's like Babe Ruth. He swings for the fence all the time, which means he strikes out a lot. But when he hits it right, it's out of the park. You know, if anyone thinks for a moment that Dave Vilwalk is just kind of doing this to make it a great show, I want to tell you, Vilwalk is to show business what Lindsay Lohan is to the Girl Scouts. Oh. Uh, Dave Vilwalk only wants one thing, and that is to win. Well, I have to agree with Pat. Uh, <laughs> Dave Vilwalk may think going in that, well, maybe I'll just kind of lay back, but I don't think he's got it in him. He wants to win. He's like Bernie Little. He wants he to does. win every single Well, heat. if in that last heat when Jean Theoret beat him, that is the heat before this one, he was hearing footsteps. Now, whoever's upstairs is pounding on the floor. And now cruising by the front of the start finish line, headed for the pits, is a very, very happy Jean Theoret. Jean Theoret did exactly what he needed to do. The uh, heat, you know, he had to win the heat to guarantee he was in the uh, that he was in the final, and I think he's all but done that. He's guaranteed he's in the final, but by doing that, he showed everything he's got. He showed that he's how to get the inside. Dave is not going to let him have the inside in the final. They're going to fight like cats for that inside lane. I know there was some talk earlier about the uh, Elam Plus, Dave Billock and those guys saving a motor, saving parts, all getting ready for this particular race because of the, the toll that this course takes on the boat. I think they're unhappy about what they've done with the boat up to this point now? You know, I think they're they're shocked. They're just, they're just shocked. I think, frankly, the Beacon guys are shocked that the boat has come around like it has. And frankly, I think the Elam guys are thinking, where did our superiority go? When I say, when I saw Scott Rainey this morning, he had this Treshire cat grin on his face. And I know last night they found something special. You know, Chip, you know, you think about the other courses that the Elam has won on. Long straightaway at Tri-Cities, wide sweeping turns. Long straightaway at Madison. Long straightaways at Detroit. Yeah, all that horsepower that boat has seemed to be uh, all they needed to win there. This is a driver's course. Two miles, tight, rough, bumpy. And the drivers have advanced a bit over the last three races to uh, understand a little bit more about what it's going to take to beat this guy so this is going to be a driver's final here and frankly dave hasn't had to be in a driver's race all year right. he literally has had so much boat speed he could start late he could start outside those days are gone down to the pits now guard swanson again who has uh, had the luck of the draw on uh, a couple of these drivers and the excitement continues in the uh, beacon plumbing pit guard hey thanks steve hey john john come up here he's coming off his boat you win another heat. Yes. Man, what about the one-two punch on the Vilwalk team? What's the deal with that? He's been dominant all season. Well, like I said, you know, for the last couple of years here in Seafair, we've, we've got a really good boat ride, and uh, I think it's showing up right now, you know. We had a hard time so far this season, so thank God for another win. I think this will put us in the final. That was a goal, because no points yesterday. That was really bad. So I think the Beacon Plumbing Boat's in the final now. Yeah, I think you're on the final, but, man, this one feels good, doesn't it? It feels really great. You know, it's really encouraging for the moral. 
for this team because they work so hard for our owner Billy and for our sponsor Beacon Plumbing. All right, nice job. It's a pleasure. Steve. And for those of you that saw uh, Jean Thierret getting a kiss on the helmet, that was John Walters, his crew chief, who has been around the block a few times and has put together some terrific boats. Bill Rocky is in the pits as well. Bill? Steve, we're with Dave Bellwalk, a little uncharted territory now, Dave. You've lost two heats in a row. <laughs> yeah, but we gained points in the national deal, and you know, I'll have to go back and look. We just seem to be having problems getting power out of the motors after the water gets rough, and so uh, we'll just have to work on it and come up with something for the final. Are you changing your mind where you might have to start the final now that, that he's beat you twice? Well, we'll get, we got to get ours to run at its potential, and, and for the last three years, we've, we've been working on that, but you know, we got a lot of Haas machinery that's going to help us build a lot of new parts, and we'll just uh, keep working on those things. Are these some of the same problems you had last year? We've just sort of hunted here. We just run into some problems, and, and you know, we just haven't been able to run the way we'd like to. And so we gotta, we got to get better. All right, good luck in the final. Thanks. Dave Villock, nobody sets a boat up better than he does to get ready for race day, and especially for championships. Meantime, talking about uh, a little bit of a problem or two, I guess there was uh, some question about the uh, maybe a little damage there. Chip, what do you see to the back end of the Alberto boat? Um, you know, my screen is kind of dark. I can't see it. Maybe up the top, we've got a piece out of the wing. And what happens is these wings are so thin. They make them so light that the jarring can, and yeah, there you see the oh. break right across the wing there. And what you want to do in these boats is make the parts as light as you possibly can, just strong enough that this doesn't happen. Those very light parts keep some very fast boats down on the water, don't they? Especially that wing and the canard up front. You know, really, these are nothing but an airplane wing with training wheels. If you take, <laughs> literally, if you take the sponsons off the boat, it's nothing but an airplane wing. So if you think of the center of the boat as just a wing and the sponsons as training wheels that touch every now and again, that's all the boat is. Mike, your thoughts? Uh, some pretty terrific racing in that heat, and that was the, the fastest boats all in one heat. That could be a preview, perhaps, of the final? Oh, yeah, I think it's definitely a preview for the final, and I think that, uh, but the final will take a different complexion. I know that uh, Chip has got uh, uh, got it figured as far as what uh, Dave Vilwak's going to want to do. Uh, he obviously does not have the boat speed to run around a couple of these guys. He's been running around uh, all season long on this race course, so he's thinking about that inside, but it has its perils, as you know, Chip. You go to the inside, and some of these guys, if they can just stay with you to the first turn, can leave you just enough water to drive in, but it's also not enough water to pass in. Steve, this is Pat. You know, I don't know that I've ever seen a final where there are five boats that it's kind of a toss-up the way they're performing today. You've got the five, you've got the 37 Beacon Plumbing, you've got uh, the Haas Mortgage. It's running just great out there. Uh, and, of course, you've got Vilwak, and uh, what a what a, what a battle it's going to be. And the quiet guy who's, isn't, who's shown us twice he can win but isn't bragging about anything is Jeff Bernard. Absolutely. And you don't know necessarily what they've got hidden in the box. This is about surprises. There's a guy out there who's about to unwrap the package. Our viewers this afternoon are going to see an all-time final heat. I think so. Well, that's what we hope for. That's what our viewers want, and we do, too. Here are the unofficial results from Heat 3B, and it was a good one. John Theoret in the Beacon Plumbing. There's Dave Villock in the ULAM Plus. Steve David in the Old Boy Alberto have a little work to do to fix that boat. Then Haas Mortgage Investors, those two boats, and finally the plumbing joint bringing up the rear. Heat 3B of the Chevy Cup at Seafair has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines, the official airline of Seafair with new non-stop service to Denver beginning November 4th. Congratulations to Jean Thierrette and the Beacon Plumbing Racing Team, your Geico photo finish winner of Heat 3B. Your search for the best price on insurance is not finished until you call Geico. And uh, there is your winner, John Thierrette, saying, yeah, baby, do I have another one in me? I think I do. We'll check in with Theoret as we get going. Meantime, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner paint job on a hydro that ran earlier. It's spectacular. We'll show you that, too, coming up. Welcome back to the shores of Lake Washington. Steve Rabel, Chip Hanauer, Mike Fitzsimmons, Pat O'Day, and a cast of thousands bringing you wall-to-wall -wall coverage on this Seafair Sunday. The boat's moving into position, the log boom, and all the rest. 
We've got uh, a tie here between boat racing and Boeing. It has been going on as almost as long as there has been boat racing here on the lake. And with a little more on that history, let's head back to the start finish line. Enjoy the water there, friends. Sure, we'd all like to do that. Here's Mike Fitzsimmons at the start finish line. Well, Steve, you just can't talk hydroplane racing in Seattle without thinking about the Boeing company. Not only were they competitors on the race course, but they have been perhaps the number one vendor to hydroplane racing for a half a century. Ted Jones, of course, was a, a Boeing uh, a technician, a, a Boeing engineer, and he designed the slow motion four from knowledge he learned uh, by uh, working on aircraft that were waterbound aircraft, seaplanes, and flying boats. And of course, Boeing supplied all that construction technology in the early days and parts and aircraft fasteners and all kinds of things. And then Bill Boeing himself decided to name an unlimited hydroplane after the hometown of, of his wife. Wahoo, Nebraska, Miss Wahoo, and we found the flying check, Mira Slovak, the driver of the U-77, U-101.5. Here we see Mira returning back to the pit area back in 1961. He scared us to death out here in 1961 when he crashed in the north turn. There you see a picture of 1968 of the, uh, the, uh, the seven... Uh, Two, uh, 737 as it flew by the start finish line barge and now you see the 787 Dreamliner colors on this the Boeing Spirit of Seattle hydroplane. It is a beautiful boat gorgeous colors Bill Rocky is standing by to talk a little bit more about that Bill. That's right Steve this boat's usually orange and white it's a backup boat of the Elam Plus but owner Sven Elstrom it's blue and white now. How did this whole thing come about? I started after the rollout of the Dreamliner Boeing 787. I was approached by Mr. Nolan if we can make a alliance or a partnership between U787 Boeing and Elstrom Manufacturing. Uh, as a display boat, uh, Boeing, you know, is a big uh, sponsor for Seafair, and they thought that it will add to the uh, uh, Seattle service and uh, all the guys who work for Boeing so that's what it happened so we started actually the crash program to get this done uh, get it painted and get it to run and the only runs for uh, uh, exhibition runs mm -hmm. but if something goes wrong with this one we we put this one in the water well, you had Jimmy King driving it out there. It looked pretty good on the water, didn't it? <laughs> it did, yeah. Matter of fact, I think we got up at 143. Uh, it was only supposed to run at 130 because it has not been trimmed yet, but it flew over the water, so everything was fine, okay? Uh -huh. And Boeing, I mean, what happened at Boeing? Have the name next to Elstra Manufacturing. That's not too shabby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sven, it's okay. looking great, and hopefully you won't have to use it. Okay, thank All you. All right, much. back okay. to you, Steve. Okay. The salute to Seafair, though, with that Boeing boat, and it sure is great to see it out on the water. I wouldn't mind seeing These one of those 787s come flying by and actually do a loop or something. That'd be fun as well. You know, as we continue here, there are lots of stories to talk about. We made big news yesterday, of course, with Jeff Bertram blowing over in the uh, Triarch electric boat, and they're still working on that. Of course, the folks along the shoreline, they make news uh, just by showing up, some of the 300,000 here. We are covering all of those stories for you. In fact, Cairo 7 Eyewitness News, they're preparing 24 hours a day for the next newscast. Chris Lagueros takes a look at our operation at Cairo 7. Welcome back to Lake Washington. As the crews are getting set to put their boats back in the water in a moment, we want to talk about some races that happened a little bit earlier today. It's time to make the awards presentations and take a look at the winning boat. Here are the official results of Heat 2A, the MirageBoats.com, with Greg Hopp at the controls, followed by Red Dot Pro Craft, Triarch, and... Let us go back to now the presentation presentation stage and Jeff Randall for Heat 2A. Hey, welcome back to the Chevrolet Cup and Seafair Awards stage. We are ready to hand out the first hardware of the day today for Sunday. It's Unlimited Heat 2A. Our winner was Greg Hopp in the MirageBoats.com, and that heat was sponsored by 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines. I've got Don Kaplan here to make the award. Don? Thank you, Jeff. On behalf of ConocoPhillips and the 76 brand featuring quality Pro Clean gasolines, it is truly my pleasure to congratulate Greg Hopp and the MirageBoats.com team for successfully winning Seafarer's Unlimited Heat 2A this morning. Once again, congratulations, Greg. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, 76 first off the bat for the sponsorship of the heat and uh, thank my sponsor miragebo.com the crew for getting my boat ready and uh, Fred Leland for having me a boat that I can compete with here and just looking forward to the rest of the day. Greg, congratulations. Thank you, 76. More hardware on the way. Back to Stephen Chip. Greg Hop has been doing some hooping it up. All right. How about Heat 2B? The finish of Heat 2B, and it was a close one, but David Bryant from Mesa, Arizona, was powering that Miss Haas Mortgage Investors boat to a win in Heat 2B over Steve David and the old boy Alberto to the presentation stage again, and Jeff Randall. Once again, welcome back to the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair Awards stage. It's Heat 2B this time, presented by our friends at Tide. And David Bryant, what a race in 2B. In the Haas Mortgage Investors boat is our winner. We've got Joy Mead from Tide to present the award. Thank you. On behalf of Tide, Bartel Drugs, and the fine independent retailers of Western Washington, I'd like to congratulate David Bryant and the Haas Mortgage Investors on winning Unlimited Heat 2B in, in an exciting, incredible race. Thank you, David. Congratulations. Thank you for sponsoring the Heat. We appreciate all the people here at Seafair. What an incredible venue for us. We've never been here before, and it's uh, pretty, pretty cool. And I got to thank uh, Kim and Debbie Gregory for giving me a boat that really goes well and let me drive it for my first time this year. And uh, of course, Haas Mortgage for sponsoring us and all you guys here, thank you very much. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you, Tide, thank you, David. It's Stephen Chip, back to you with more racing. And Jean Theoret from inside the cockpit, the winner of Heat 2C, here are the results. From Maple Grove, Quebec, Canada, and the Miss Beacon Plumbing, edging Dave Vilwak. In E2C, the plumbing joint and Haas Mortgage Investors. And one more time, the awards presentation. Once again, welcome back to the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair Awards stage. And this time, it is Heat 2C. And our winner in this one, after a tough day yesterday, Jean Theoret with Miss Beacon Plumbing. Jean, congratulations. Thank you very much. I want to you know, thank Beacon Plumbing for sponsoring us and Seafair for having us here every year. And uh, thank God for this Heat win. It's really encouraging. John, good luck. Thank you very much again to Chevrolet. Stephen Chip, back to you. In Heat 3A, FormulaBoats.com coming through with Jeff Bernard of Gig Harbor, Washington at 135 miles an hour. And here are the final results. Great pictures from Copper 7, by the way. There's the U5 boat. Car Pros, ProCraft Windows, Formula Mirage, and Red Dot rounding out the field in 3A. Let's give away some hardware downstairs. Welcome back to the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair Awards stage. It is time to hand out more hardware, this time for Unlimited Heat 3A. Our winner this time, another great race, Jeff Bernard, FormulaBoats.com. And to present the awards from our uh, heat sponsor, Yellowtail Wines, we have Brendan Bias and Will Wright. Jeff, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, man. Thank Thanks, guys, for sponsoring this heat. Uh, I got to thank Formula Boats and uh, our whole team down there. They've been busting their butt. Um, we're in the final, finally, here in Seattle on the front row. So we're coming after you, Gene. <laughs> we're going to try to put this thing above fifth place for once. So thanks, guys. You got it, man. Jeff, congratulations. Thank you, Yellowtail Wines. Back to you, Stephen Chip. All right, Jeff, and in what may have been a preview of the final, the Beacon Plumbing Boat fixed today after the wreck yesterday, and Jean Theoret wins it. Here are the final results. Take a look from both inside and at the final. Beacon Plumbing, Elam, Old Boy, Oberto, and the rest of the boats. Again, that could be a look at your final. We'll see, but back to Jeff Randall one more time. Welcome back once again to the Chevrolet Cup at Seafair Awards stage. It's time for the hardware for Heat 3B. The winner, we just had him up here a little while ago. Once again, in the Miss Beacon Plumbing, Jean Theoret. And this heat sponsored by our friends at Chevrolet. We have Gina Tobin and Bruce Allen to present the award. Sean, congratulations. Your second win today. On behalf of Chevrolet and the Northwest Chevy dealers, uh, we look forward to the final heat. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I want to thank the, you know, Chevrolet for sponsoring this event. They've been sponsors for a couple of years now, and uh, we really enjoy having you here as sponsors. 
thanks Beacon Plumbing for you know sponsoring us and uh, of course our crew and Seafair. This is a fantastic event and to be here in the podium is is a really good blessing. Thank you. John Theoret having a good day today and Chevrolet, thank you very much. Stephen Chip, back to you.